What is up guys and welcome to Formula 1 2015. This is a very interesting game within the franchise. This was the first game that I've, I feel like was, I don't, I don't know specifically, but I think it was made on a new uh, physics engine. They certainly revamped the handling and uh, they went back to basics with this game. This was the first Formula 1 game that was released on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Uh, console, so the current gen platforms, and so this was a, a big step for Codemasters, uh, but one which was uh, quite controversial for many reasons, which we will uh, get into in a minute. The, uh, yeah, I like the menus. I, 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 it's it's kind of cool. It uh, reminds me of F1 2016 a lot. I feel like this game and 2016 are quite similar, uh, both in the way that the car feels and how the menus are all set up from what I remember. Uh, but the big distinguisher between this and 2016 is this game has absolutely no career mode. It just does not exist. Career mode, uh, this is the only game in the entire franchise where you cannot play as yourself. You have to play as a 2015 Formula 1 driver. And I've got to say this was an absolute nightmare of a game to make from a content creation standpoint and a lot of single player people didn't like this either um, you had championship season which was race as a driver let's, let's not even go into that it's uh, absolutely ridiculous so you could pick anyone in the field you go through the entirety of a Formula 1 season and then after the season was done it was like well done now start again uh, absolutely no progression there was nothing and uh, to kind of compensate for the lack of career mode, Codemasters brought in uh, this new feature called Pro Season, which was basically Championship Season, just with no HUD. <laughs> um, it was all assists off, um, you had to race in cockpit cam, no HUD, 100% race, no restarts, no flashbacks, no nothing. It's hardcore mode, and I feel like even to this day, you can still kind of do a pro career mode, but no one really does it. I did it in 2015, and once was enough for me. But anyway, we're going to jump into the career mode of championship season, and we are going to have a go. Bloody hell. This is, this is, this is the start of career mode. How sad is this? Let's go elite. Like, ah, oh. no cutscenes, no nothing. It's just get right into the action. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. We'll soon learn the true performance of these cars out on track. What can we expect to see in the following session? Well, I think we're all expecting the Mercedes power unit to be particularly strong this year. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them at the front. Was this the year that Guido Vandergaard was meant to be in the Sauber, but he he got kicked out in the Australian Grand Prix? Like Sauber had three drivers meant to be in the car, but it always turned out to be a bit of a farce. Here we are. Oh, I've gone to track. Well, here we are in the McLaren Honda. This is the epitome of poor performance uh, was this season of F1 for McLaren. And you can see straight away getting absolutely left for dead the rest of the field. I've got to find my bearings because this is... Uh, oh god, that's not the right one I wanted. This feels very different to what I'm used to. The force feedback doesn't work properly. Uh, and that's because this wheel wasn't in existence when this game came out. And it doesn't have full support. And so when I turn... It just feels weird. When I turn the wheel, nothing at the start. And then it gets stronger the more I turn it, kind of thing. Whereas that's actually the opposite in today's F1 games, but I'll get used to it. What a stonking lap by Alonso. He comes through the final corner to absolutely blitz the field in this reverse qualifying session. I don't remember these cutscenes being a thing, but those are properly nice. What a session it's been for Mercedes today. They've locked the front row of the grid for tomorrow's race. Well, it's going to be an interesting race towards the first corner tomorrow because whoever leads into turn two will be in a very strong position to go on and win. Thank you, Crofty and Ant. 
that's probably the one saving grace about F1 2015 is those nice cutscenes at the end, which I completely forgot about. But yeah, this was the year that uh, commentary came in as well. We lost career mode, we lost um, safety car, we lost red flags, we lost a lot of things. But what we did gain is Crofty. Wonderful. So, uh, the results of quality. I'm 10 seconds off the pace. Um, yeah, everyone's just cheating, it seems. Hello and welcome from Albert Park, Australia, for today's race. And I think it's shaping up to be a classic. It's a great position for Lewis Hamilton to start the season from, and one that he'll be hoping he can capitalise on and turn into a race win today. Well, we all know that Lewis has raw speed, and if you give him a fast car, he'll win races. So if he can stay up front by the end of the first few corners, I'm sure he's going to be very difficult to beat. Right. Pretty simple strategy. One stop to primes. Uh, this is before we had the intricacies of three tyre compounds in a race weekend. We only have the options and the primes to worry about. It's kind of mad to me that we were still calling it options and primes, even in 2015. I thought we moved on from that uh, a lot earlier than this. But regardless, we're here for the Australian Grand Prix. Thankfully, my voice is not in the game to deafen you. But yeah, this is going to be a tough old race. P20. I am not used to this at all. But uh, we're going to throw ourselves right into the deep end here. On F1 2015, away we go for the quote-unquote career mode experience in the McLaren Honda. To make matters worse, oh God. to make matters worse, my PC is struggling, I think, to run this game. It's If the FPS is a little bit weird or if there's screen freezes and stuff, I severely apologize. That, uh, it seems this game wasn't optimized very well for PC. Oh my goodness. Traction. Or lack of traction.com. We made a good start. We're up in a P15. Worth noting, we're not running on the hardest difficulty. Because um, I wanted to throw myself in the McLaren and give myself an actual chance of... Where's my force feedback gone? Of... What? Okay, that's weird. I don't... Codemasters, there's a glitch in this game. Your force feedback cuts out for a couple of seconds. And then it comes back. Please fix. Oh, what the hell? Where'd you come from? Okay, bye then. Substream, no DRS, nothing. Let's see if we can dive bomb into turn three. No, not quite gonna work. I'm really struggling here, guys. There are so many issues that are going on behind the scenes, which you partially know about. Yes, uh, the screen freezes and the force feedback cutting in and out constantly. But my my computer is really struggling to run this game. That it has frame drops and. Sometimes the encoding like completely like shits itself. But we are pressing on with this regardless. We're gonna defy all odds and find our way back to the points in a McLaren Honda at the Australian Grand Prix. We're just gonna make it happen, lads. What I do like though is the handling. It, uh, it doesn't feel too alien. It doesn't feel too dissimilar to what I'm used to uh, on 2019, 2018, the, the core physics are there. It just feels a bit lighter um, on the steering. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. We need to save some fuel. The problem is I've changed my MFD to... Well, my MFD button is mapped to the same button as changed camera, which makes no sense. GP2 engine. GP2. Okay, well, that's just great. I remember this is the game as well, where a YouTuber championship. Uh, I would constantly, and I mean constantly, run out of fuel, and it seems that that trend is continuing today. To be fair, I'm in a McLaren Honda, and I'm in order to just even keep up with these guys, I have to run it in rich fuel mixture, just to, just to compensate for the lack of power. But what is the caveat to this as well is. This was the worst car on fuel economy, too. Like, I think Alonso was really upset around Canada, I think. He just really didn't want to save fuel. Um, 
I don't want! I don't want! <laughs> um, and so, I'm resonating with him today. I really can't be bothered with this. So I'm going to make a pit stop. I'm going to see if the pit stops are any different. Uh, looks like it's automatic on the way in, so there's completely no control. I think in 2016 they introduced um, slowing down for the pit lane, which was wonderful. No cutscenes there. The map is flipping out. And I am going to quit this race because I just... No. No thank you. Pulling up Fernando. I'm, I'm getting out of here early. Being a bit of a diva. Anyway, multiplayer. What are we saying? Oh! Multiplayer. <laughs> Custom lobbies were not a thing on this game either. They had the stupid hoppers. Beginner introduction hopper. Oh, you can have custom. I think it was on Xbox One where you couldn't have the custom race session list. Yeah, so you can search for it here. Oh my god, there's someone online! Bro, let's go! <laughs> oh my god, my microphone's on. Why is that on? Mutual. <laughs> All right. F1 2015, someone is on the game. As if, oh my God, there's people here. Why are all these people playing F1 2015? <laughs> I'm gonna mute you. Bye bye. <laughs> Are you Bro. Where have all these people come from? And why are we doing a full season? Who's got time for that? As if... As if there's been an online lobby. I feel sorry for the people who actually choose to play this game and have to, or have to play it every day and don't have the means possibly to have a more recent Formula 1 game. This is, this is by far the bottom of my list to pick. This one and 2014 were the worst of the franchise. And for a little while there, I was worried about, like, where the franchise was going. But Cody's really, like, brought it back in 2016. 2017 was good. 2018, they built upon that, that even more. And 2019 is the best game we have. So, yeah, I'm glad we have got away from the days of 2014 and 2015. They were not... They weren't, they weren't great. But here we go with an online race. I hope no one else joins because I have no way of muting them and they are quite simply going to have to put up with me commentating in their race uh, from here on out. This isn't a thing in the other F1 games, might I add as well. Uh, microphone is automatically disabled. Again, another reason why this game sucks. Do we even have a setup? We do apparently. Only one from 2016. So let's... Load this, I guess. It just shows how much effort I put into setups um, four years ago. It wasn't a league race. I did absolutely no league racing on 2014 and 2015. So I really like... I let my skills go a bit sloppy. But away we go for an online race. Never thought I'd be doing this. I don't know if like all this. Oh my god, those guys are going flying. Driving proficiency multiplayer. What? Come on, hurry up! I'm losing out positions here. Fan favorite Felipe Massa has certainly delivered a wonderful performance out there in qualifying. He's got the fastest lap and is now on pole for tomorrow's race. Felipe Massa is on pole, is he? I think you'll find medical pole is on pole. But okay. Welcome to the twisting corners of the Hungaro Ring, a popular track which has crowned two world champions in its history. It's time for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Let's check that cheeky race strategy. Odds on me not finishing this race are about 100%. As, uh... <laughs> the lack of frame rate is really starting to work me. Well, let's get this race underway. No manual starts either. The red lights go out and it's just away we go. The Hungarian Grand Prix overtaking might be difficult. I hope the damage isn't on. Otherwise, this will be a very short race. Drop down to last. Those three getting tangled up. 
Thank you for the ghosting system. See if you can pull it. Oh, illegal overtake. Nice to see the penalty system is still good. But anyway, nice run on the Red Bull. We'll have the inside for this left hand. The Ferrari just completely forgets how to drive. And we now lead the Hungarian Grand Prix. What a weird race. I don't know what's going on. Come on, lads. I'm playing this for the first time in four years. I'm, I'm guessing that you guys have played this on the daily. Why aren't you challenging me? Let's re-overtake these guys, shall we? Thanks, Chief. Let's have a good online battle. Ding-dong battle. Ferrari is again blowing up. Oh, no! They're gone! A Ferrari! <laughs> all over the place! So am I! I thought these guys go through again. No? Okay, you'd rather run into the back of me. Wonderful. What the hell? What the hell? What have I been hit by? Nothing! I think that sums up the F1 2015 online experience. Let's get the hell out of here. This game, just from like every... Every facet is a nightmare. Ugh. No career mode. No safety car. No red flag. No proper online lobbies. No stability. No scenario modes. It's a very bare bones game with not much going for it. Um, but that's that's pretty much the game, guys. Like, there was multiplayer, time trial, which is, you know, time trial. Then uh, there's championship season, which was a bit of a joke. And pro season, which is basically the same thing with just harder. And, and that's your game. That That is F1 2015. I don't know how we managed to get through a whole year of this. Uh, but 2016 really was the saving grace of this franchise. Um, and if it wasn't for that game, we probably we may not have the F1 game franchise that we do today. But anyway, um, that's it for me today. I'm sorry to end it on a bit of a sour note. But like literally everything you can think of is, is kind of going wrong for me. And that, that kind of does epitomize this game. Yeah. Um... I didn't think it was a horrible game, to be honest, when I played it, but um, it was it's just lacking a lot of features. But uh, you can clearly see here on PC, it's, it's very poorly optimized. And I have a beast of a PC, like a, I think I have the best PC, the CPU, the best CPU, like, you can buy right now. And an RTX 2080 Ti. I should not be struggling to run this game. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. You'll see plenty more racing game content. Should we do 2016? Let me know in the comments. And... We might give it a go. I feel like 2016 is just about nostalgic enough to try. But we shall go no further than that. 2017 is too recent to play. But anyway, I'm out. Peace.